Part 1. White Clouds. Pegasus Moon. Throne of Knowledge. The northern lands are enveloped in a bitter cold, and frigid winds are carried across the sea to the south of Adrestia. When feather white snow falls on Fodlin's locket, the fort looks as delicate as a pearl. However, beneath that snowy blanket, her throat is more treacherous than ever. Rhea, please talk to me. What are you hiding? What is the meaning of how that one looks? It is almost as though... As I said, there is nothing of which to speak. For now. At the end of this month... I read Gerald's diary. I happened upon it in his room. What? In it, he stated the reason for his departure. The baby, thought to have died in the fire, has returned to us. Gerald realized that you had done something to the child and decided to flee. What did you do to that baby, Rhea? Nothing questionable, I should hope. Setteth, enough. They will be here shortly. No more, I beg of you. I will take our dear professor to the holy tomb. There, I should be able to see our dearest wishes to fruition. When I was young, I heard her voice there. I'm sure of it. You may enter. I have been awaiting your arrival, Professor. Now that you have received sacred power from the Goddess, there is somewhere you must pay a visit to at once. You must go to the Holy Tomb so that you may receive a divine revelation from the Goddess. The Holy Tomb is where the Goddess sleeps. This monastery was originally built for the purpose of protecting that hallowed temple. Only a select few know of it, but there is a legend about Seros and the Holy Tomb. Saint Seros, the first soul to be gifted power from the Goddess, received her revelation there. She was told that it was her sacred duty to save the people of Fodlin, and that she must use her power wisely in order to lead them. The words that we were blessed with such power. There will be a ceremony at the Holy Tomb. It is then that you will receive the Goddess's revelation. You may we were blessed with such power. There will be a ceremony at the Holy Tomb. It is then that you will receive the Goddess's revelation. You may share this mission with your students. It is said that when Seros received the revelation, she had holy warriors by her side protecting her. Your students, who have followed you and fought alongside you through the darkest of times, are well suited to stand by you for the ceremony. Of course, as the leader of the Church of Seros, I will be by your side as well. The Holy Tomb is a sacred temple that is sealed off from the rest of the world. There is nothing to fear. Even if something were to happen, I am more than capable of protecting myself. Much has changed, but your duty has not wavered. Steal your mind for the ceremony and prepare your students well. Rhea and Sedeth were not their usual selves. What happened to Teach that's questionable? And what really awaits at the Holy Tomb? The way they were acting, I don't think they have any plans of sharing that information. Wow! 
Thanks for inviting me. Oh, wow, thanks. So delish. Yep. Wow. My mind keeps drifting today. I think. Thanks for the tea. I hope you'll invite me again. Professor, a moment? I am sorry that I doubted your ability. I deeply regret ever holding such a view of you. It is obvious to me now that you are extraordinary. Do you doubt your own power, even now? I suppose that's only natural. You've lived your whole life knowing next to nothing about yourself. Not even Geralt could have possibly known all there is to know about you. But I wonder, are you satisfied with that? Are you content, not knowing who you are? Or do you yearn to know more? But you cannot go on not knowing, can you? So, only one more question matters. Are you ready? The truth. All of it. Learning it will doubtlessly have direct consequences on your life. I do not know what those will be. You may decide, once you learn it, that you wish you hadn't. But even if you have such regrets, you will never be able to return to ignorance. So, are you ready to know the truth? I see. That is what I wish to hear. The Archbishop continues to put her faith in you, and so you will continue to have my aid. More than that, I will put my faith in you as well, and I will do all that is within my power to help you someday reach the truth. My room works better for me, but I am willing to compromise for today. Thank you. Will you drink some? What? I don't think... What? Well then. What? Well then. Thank you for a wonderful time, Professor. A strange feeling.
it's the new boss. Not setting a very good example. Did pretty well. Perfect comprehension. I actually passed? Hungry. I gotta eat something. Again, Raphael? Here. Perhaps this will suffice. Really? I can have this? But don't you need to eat after all that training? We can't have you starving, can we? Your strength is a great asset. It would be a terrible loss if you fell faint in battle. Besides, no true noble can look upon the hungry with indifference. S -s Seriously? Wow, that's awful generous of you. Thank you so much! You're welcome. But listen while you eat. I believe it would benefit you to pay more attention to the way you carry yourself in the company of your betters. It is the duty of the nobility to protect the common folk. And, in return, the commoner is expected to show deference and respect. Naturally, I understand that there is a certain tendency toward familiarity because we are classmates. However... Oh. 
Oh, that was tasty. Raphael, did you hear a word I just said? Oh, hey! I sent my little sis some of that fancy treat you gave me a while back. She wrote back to say that it was tasty and to thank you. So thanks. That is excellent news. I'm pleased to hear that you both enjoyed it. But there's no need for you to thank me. It was actually a gesture of gratitude in the other direction, from me to you. Thanks to the wisdom of your words, I have begun to consider my approach to dining in a completely new way. Mealtime has proven to be ideal for the study of character. It is a tool I intend to make great use of as the leader of the Alliance. Yep, it's just like I told you. Food tastes better when you eat with good company. That's not quite what I meant. <laughs> no matter. You are satisfied, I trust? I could probably keep eating, but I'm ready to train. All right, time to get back to it so I can protect my buddy, Lawrence. <laughs> I've not quite gotten through to you, have I? It is not the duty of a commoner to protect a noble. <laughs> that is fundamentally against the order of society. But if you hadn't given me food just now, I couldn't survive on the battlefield because I'd be too weak to train. Who'd take care of my little sis if I wasn't around? She'd probably end up starving to death as well. In a way, by feeding me, you're protecting her too. It was only a little food. There's no need to get carried away. You're a real decent noble, you know that? Worrying so much about my sister and all. All I gotta do is protect you, then you protect everyone else, right? I'm not certain your logic is sound, but your strength is undeniable. Very well. Do as you like. Dining certainly is a window to the soul. Eating with you has helped me to see that I've misjudged you. You're not some gluttonous simpleton. You are grateful for the protection the nobility offers and eager to emulate our example. <laughs> didn't work. Odd. My logic was sound. Or so I thought. Ah, Lysithia. I've just happened upon some lovely tea leaves. Would you care to join me for a cup? Nope. Busy. While I admire your dedication to research, you simply must take breaks now and again for the sake of your health. I am perfectly capable of knowing when to stop. I'm no child, I'll have you know. Come now. Take just a brief respite. Look, I've even brought snacks to go with the tea. Ooh, that actually looks pretty tasty. All right, all right, fine. Well, what do you think? These are made especially for my house. I've loved them since I was a boy. Oh, jeez, wow. Actually, this is delicious. You have excellent taste, Lawrence. Have a consider it well worth the investment. I'd like to know more about you, Lysithia. Where did you learn such a command of magic? When you were a child, what kind of... <sighs> Come on, can't we just enjoy the snacks? I loathe talking about myself. Openness is a prerequisite to successful diplomacy. You'll learn that when you take your first real steps into high society. Can you stop with the kid treatment? I mean, really, is age the only thing you consider when engaging with others? But there's nothing the matter with being young. There is a role to be played at every stage in life. That is how we learn and grow. Are you even listening? Ugh, it's like you can't even help yourself but to continue treating me like a child. I absolutely recognize your raw ability. You possess quite a rare gift for magic. I hope we can find a way for you to use that gift to help as many people as we can. Surely you can agree to that at least. You really are relentless. I'll spell this out for you once more. I don't care. You're headstrong, just like me. That very quality will ensure a better future for Fodlan. I, sir, am nothing like you. You're bullheaded and boorish, and utterly fixated on the future. All you care about is what's to come. Sure, it's all well and good to be thinking about such lofty things. However, for me, the future's a very long ways off. Better to focus on the present, on the here and now. Thanks for the tea. Lysithia?
What is it, Marianne? I'm curious why you've been eating your meals near me as of late. I'm not much for conversation. I'm always at a loss for words, and I never know how to respond to questions. Well, it's true that there are some who prefer a lively dinner table, but I prefer to eat in peace. With you, my meals are a relaxing experience. In fact, you're the most peaceful dining companion I've ever had. R really there is a real grace and fluidity to your every movement. I greatly appreciate refined table manners. Observing you all this time, I believe I've realized what is so striking about you. Your beauty comes from the heart. It is an inner beauty. It is not some flamboyant pageantry, a product of external adornment or grooming. When I first noticed it, I thought that it could use some refinement, a little polish, but I was mistaken. You are perfect in your natural state, just as you are. You think I'm beautiful? Just the way I am? Certainly. To add a superficial luster on top of what you already possess would be offensively redundant. No one's ever said anything like that to me before. Alas, I am the only one with eyes. But perhaps it is for the best that your beauty not be revealed to all the world. Yes. It is certainly better that only I, Lawrence Hellman Gloucester, can appreciate your true magnificence. And on that note, I bid you farewell. What a strange person. But being called beautiful just the way I am, that was nice to hear. Hello, Leone. Busy as usual, I see. Yep, lots to do. Not like you fancy nobles. Hey, can't you see all this stuff I'm carrying? Come on, move over already. Alas, I cannot comply with your request. Can't even ask a noble to take a step to the side, huh? That's a joke, right? You're kidding. You've injured your foot. I could tell immediately by the way you are favoring it. <laughs> what? Heavy lifting will only worsen the injury. Please, permit me to examine it. Hey, cut that out! Isn't that improper or something, bowing to a commoner? I am not bowing to you. I am tending your wound. Th that's not what it'll look like. Hey, it's fine. Leave it. Easing the burdens of the common folk is a natural obligation of the nobility. Now hold still and keep quiet for a moment, if you would be so kind. That's a real pretty way to talk about sitting around in castles doing nothing. Let me tell you, everyone in my village is so grateful to be taxed up to the eyeballs for the privilege of... Ow! Oh, it's quite swollen. And you're feverish. Fortunately, I do have an ointment here that should be of use. What? You just carry that stuff around with you? Certainly. It won't do to be unprepared if I happen across someone in need. I don't get you, Lawrence. <sighs> it seems I've neglected to pack bandages. I'm afraid this handkerchief will have to suffice. What, that fancy thing? Bit of a waste, isn't it? Hey, no thanks. I don't need some noble's pity. What about the help of a friend? I am as much that as I am a noble, if you recall. More of your weird logic. That should ease the pain. And since you are recovering, allow me to carry this burden for you as well. There we are. Now, farewell. <sighs> I really don't understand that guy. Oh no, I completely forgot to thank him. Looking as lovely as ever today, Dorothea. Oh, save it for your noble girls, Lawrence. I'm not in the mood. I was only being polite. And it really was quite... Quite wonderful to be so near your elegance. Now, if you'll please excuse me. Now hold just a moment. 
I have tolerated quite enough of this impertinence. Not a word has escaped my lips to imply that you are anything less than a highly attractive woman. But I am the heir to a noble house. I have a duty. Thus, I am unable to engage in courtship with you. What is it about my circumstances that you seem to find so very amusing? Um, all of it? You're no different from the men who flirted with me when I was in the opera. As long as you're getting what you're after, you don't much care what a woman wants, needs, or feels. That is truly what you think of me? I, I am afraid you have completely misunderstood. Oh, have I? Do explain. If noble status were my only priority, then I could be married a hundred times over by now. But birthright is not sufficient for me. I am not looking merely for an accessory. Marriage is a relationship of mutual respect, support, and trust. If my wife and I are of the same mind and of the same worth, then together we can achieve anything. That is why I make overtures to so many ladies. I am in search of an ideal. You're searching for someone who matches your vision of a perfect spouse? <laughs> How odd! So am I! And everyone else. My standards are somewhat more exacting, but yes, I suppose on that point we are similar. Please understand that I'm acting with the best of intentions in search of a partner. You're more serious than I thought. And so earnest, it's... it's almost adorable. If you met a peasant girl and fell madly in love, would you be able to give her up? Break her heart? I would have no choice. The worlds of the nobility and the common folk are simply too far apart. I cannot choose to abandon my duty merely for the sake of a fleeting emotion. Lawrence, you're dangerously close to dedicating your life to the lie that nobility is something special. I hope you realize that before it's too late. Oh, is that Marianne? Hmm? Ah, no, sorry. It's just you turned so quickly. It gave me a start. I don't mean to interrupt your prayers, but what's with that posture? Don't you think lowering your head so much might... I don't know... Offend the goddess? Maybe, um, spook her a little? I'm not praying, only confessing. Confessing? What are you confessing for? For everything about me. That can't possibly be necessary. There's no way you're as bad as you make it seem. I've seen how kind you are with the horses, and I've noticed you're always sensitive to everyone's tastes when you cook. But that's... Yeah, well, if either of us is going to confess, it should be me. I used to be a thief. I may have only stolen because I was poor and starving, but it was still wrong. I'm only even here thanks to Lenato. He gave me a second chance, and now I eat well every day. I'm doing all I can to make the most of it. You're a noble yourself, aren't you? The daughter of Margrave Edmund, I think. And if you're a noble, that means... Do you happen to have a crest? A crest? I do, but it's... I knew it! That's great, Marianne! There's nothing great about it. Please, don't be modest! It's an extraordinary gift! You should be proud of it! If I had one, I'd use it to make sure my brother and sister never had to live in poverty. Think about all the good you could do for the world with your power. No, I, I can't. You don't understand. This crest is worthless. I'm sorry, but I must go. No, not again. I'm not good at this. <laughs>
say. In town earlier, there seemed to be more people around than usual. Is there some festival this month that I'm forgetting about? Impressive. Hurry up and cage the wild boar. Look, he's losing his grip. Even in his swordplay, he's getting sloppy. If he keeps progressing like this, he's going to get himself killed. Kranya, Solon, they're dead, but we still have a glut of enemies. We still have to take down the Death Knight and the Flame Emperor. Our next battle is fast approaching. I'm ready for it. Professor, please. If he hears it from you that he needs to rest, perhaps his highness will listen. He's exaggerating. He thinks my color is off and that rest will cure all. I have a headache, but that's just from lack of sleep. It's not going to stop me from completing this month's mission. The professor agrees. Please rest, at least until the task is at hand. I won't. Even if I tried, it's not like I would get any decent sleep. It would only be a waste of time. So different. You're still our professor in there, right? Did anything else change besides your hair and eyes? Are your arms bigger? How do your abs look? Really? You gotta teach me how to do that. Professor, sorry, I'm really not feeling well this month. Even leaving my room for dinner is just too much. It's got nothing to do with your, um, changes. So, um, d don't open the door, please. Uh, yes? So... This month's mission is to take part in a ritual at the Holy Tomb, where you will receive a revelation from the Goddess herself. What if she really appears? What if I finally get to gaze upon her radiance? I've always imagined the Goddess, how beautiful she must be. Imagine what it must be like inside the holy tomb. Well, it's probably a grave, that much is for sure, and it's likely underground. Beyond that, who knows? I can't help but wonder, though, just what kind of ritual is this? legends. Stories containing people who have a spirit living inside of them. Those spirit people have much strength. They are maybe able to fly in the air or race across the ocean. Hair that shines and eyes that glow. They have qualities that are not unlike what you are looking like, Professor. Do not have doubt, Professor. The powers you have are like the powers of the legends. Oh, 
findings, Professor. Nothing to report. Although, I suppose, you are something to report. For a moment, I thought you were someone suspicious. Lucky for you, I am quite perceptive. It took only that single moment for me to recognize you. <laughs> the Professor went out and got some new power. Hello there. This one, yes? I thank you. This one, yes? I this one, yes? I this one, yes? I this one, yes? I think this one, yes? I think this one, yes? I think this one, yes? I thank you. Return soon, please. Hey, welcome. You have a good eye. Uh, you have a good eye. Uh, you have a good eye. Uh, you have a good eye. A uh, plate. You have a good eye. A uh, you have a good eye. A uh, plate. You have a good eye. A uh, you have a good eye. A uh, plate. You have a good eye. A uh, pleasure doing business with you. Come again. You there. I recently had an errand to run. And so I had to pass by the office. I didn't mean to, but I overheard Lady Rhea and Sedith arguing. Actually, it was more like Sedith was interrogating Lady Rhea. People who live in an ordinately long time, people whose hair changes color, and those odd heroes' relics. Is Fodlan some mystical land full of inhuman creatures? You should see for yourself. I'd recommend exploring west of the Empire. Working hard, aren't you? I'll admit, I'm impressed. I can assist with any tasks or help with your students. On it. I'm available anytime I'm not on a mission with the Knights. Sometimes, I find myself thinking I should leave Garigmach and return to my home, where I should have been all alone. Ignore me. I'm sorry. It's a silly thing. An old man's ramblings and nothing more. I hear that Lady Rhea will accompany you for this month's task. She's the pillar that supports the hearts of Fodlan's people. Her safety is paramount. I hope there are no complications. <sighs> Monica, no, Kranya. Kranya is dead, and so is Solon, by your hand. Taking vengeance with your own hand. I'm sure Gerald would be proud. changed even the other professors were taken completely by surprise there's a ritual at the holy tomb this month isn't there i wonder what'll happen with that i'm sure you'll be all right but don't lose sight of who you really are okay however you may change and whatever new power goes along with those changes you'll still be the same person deep down remember that hey uh in our battle last month, we really cut the enemy down to size. But there are other enemies we have yet to hunt down, not least the Flame Emperor. Once we've crushed them all, we can return to our peaceful lives at the monastery. It will happen soon. I have a feeling something big is coming. Hey, Professor. You're good looking, you know that? At the same time, you look like someone who was born to fight. I bet we'd get along. I'm also good-looking and born to fight. <laughs> Need any help with your class? Feel free to call on me when a fight's brewing. 
Thunderbrand and I will be there when you need us. saw you, Professor, with that hair color and that eye color, I thought you looked kind of like Lady Rhea. Like maybe you could be related. I like the way it looks. I wonder if I could change my hair color too. Maybe if I tried hard enough. If I thought real hard about it, I mean. All I need to do is get trapped up in a strange place and then escape, right? Just like you did. Edelgard and Hubert have been busier than usual. Constantly coming and going in and out of Garrick Mach? Perhaps they are doing something in the Empire. As the legitimate heir of the Iyer family, I have not heard anything about it. But if it were significant, I am sure my father would have told me. consequence of gaining these powers, did you? Sometimes our frail bodies don't do well with excess power, so don't push yourself too hard. strong now. I'm starting to understand why you were appointed professor. Yeah, that's definitely mine. You really saved me with this. I owe you one, professor. cooking talent. A little more secret spice and... Hey! No peeking! Is a revelation. <laughs> I can't help but smile when I eat it. Eating food always fires me up. Hoorah! Let's go fight somebody! Pristine manners are essential, even if the quality of the food is poor. Wouldn't you agree, Ferdinand? Indeed. We may not care for the meal, but we must show our respect for the person who cooked it.
that smell. Mm, it's amazing. My fave, in fact. Do you like it too? Hmm. I like seeing a table full of my favorite dishes. This is delicious! My absolute favorite! Ah, oh, I can eat so much of this stuff. My stomach's growling just thinking about it. Delicious food really takes my worries away. Ooh, <laughs> I love this stuff. Did you know that? to give my compliments to the chef. The flavor is nostalgic to me for some reason. Hmm, I'd like some more. Looks delicious. Goddess, forgive me. I've just got to indulge. Ooh, this is my favorite. You've got great taste. to eat when you stare my apologies you and the professor are both so fascinating I simply cannot help myself professor. Oh. you've been granted this power by the goddess herself Truly, you must be a very special individual. Maybe Saros transformed before receiving her revelation, too. Hmm. I haven't heard anything about that before. Maybe that part never found its way into the legend? It is told that Saros had a revelation, instructing her to use her power for good and to lead the people of Fodlin to salvation. I wonder what sort of revelation you might have, Professor. Students of yours will soon graduate and become unreachable royalty and nobility. 
You should show them respect now, or you might find yourself out of a job someday. <laughs> no. One look at your students' faces, and it's apparent that would never happen. Even when your kids graduate, I bet they'll still think fondly of you. You'll always be professor to them. What? Professor, did Hanneman make his I will do no harm speech or promise this won't hurt a bit when he asked to study you? Both? I've a bit of research I'd like to perform. Nothing so crass as Hanneman's poking, prodding, and drawing of blood. No, I wish to investigate crest power itself. Crest power must have some kind of limit, right? Lady Rhea says any limits must be the protection of the goddess, but that doesn't quite answer it for me. Hmm. <laughs> Long ago, St. Seros was gifted with a divine revelation from the Goddess, as well as incredible power. Is that what happened to you too, Professor? No way! The Professor transformed before receiving any kind of divine revelation, right? Still, I wonder, does the fact that you've changed really mean you've been granted some kind of power? If that's the case, then what sort of revelation can be gained from the ritual? I'm guessing the revelation will just be a gentle reminder to use this new power to save the people of Fodlin. What else is there to say? You don't actually believe we're going to hear the voice of the goddess, do you? I swear, it's like you're an entirely different person. No, not at all. I'm just not used to it. It really suits you, though. What the? I see. Hey, Teach, is it okay for you to be out on your own right now? Just... Please be careful not to topple over again. You scared us nearly to death. Anyway, doesn't Rayo want something from you? Sounds important. I'm glad I'll be there to witness the ritual at the Holy Tomb. I want to see whether or not something happens with my own eyes. yourself anymore <laughs> of course you're right I'm just being silly as usual need something see you again soon okay, but I should really have a cute dance to go along with it. Professor, let me sing for you. Do you not like my voice? It would make a Pegasus dance with joy.
Pardon me. Reminds me, all things considered, this year has been rather terrible. As far as the students are concerned, next month is the last one of the school year. Next month, we will hold the graduation ceremony, though it'll be an understandably subdued affair. This month, we ask that you carry out your duties as best you can to ensure that our students remain calm. To be honest, I cannot keep up with all that's been happening recently. Monica was actually Kranya. Tomas was actually Solon. Who were these people? What about you, Professor? You were a true ally, yes? Not the most convincing answer you could have given. Still, I simply must take you at your word. worked here for years, and this is the first I've heard of it. I mean, it does make some sense. Sort of. Something about it is still weird. I understand now why they'd build the monastery in the mountainous center of Fodlin. Although... When the monastery was built, the kingdom and alliance weren't even around yet. But look how cleverly it was placed right in the middle of the empire, kingdom, and alliance. That's weird, right? Huh? Recently, Professor, I feel as though you've been a bit... distant. It's like you're sort of floating above the clouds, separate from other people. And like you've got no interest at all in ever coming back down. How can I help? Hey, don't worry. I thought maybe I'd ask and see what you'd say. Well... Professor! Are you positive? Really? Your appearance is due to the influence of the Crest of Flames? Intriguing. Unfortunately, I have found no record of Nemesis's hair and eye color ever changing. However, if that transformation was brought on in part by the power of the crest, that would be most... Well, I suppose interesting is too small a word. Still, it would be an absolutely exceptional discovery. To know for certain, we must investigate further. So, close off. What? A full physical is in order, yes? We need to know if this transformation affected you adversely. Don't worry, it won't hurt a bit. Professor! Oh, Professor, I am so happy! Your new hair and eye color suit you well. We make quite the pair. But, recently, I sense that things are a bit strange between Lady Rhea and my brother. She wants to do something at the Holy Tomb. I do not know what, but... Hmm... Whenever it has concluded, I hope they will return to their friendship, as it has always been. Professor, how long have you been standing there? I didn't see you. I was just sorting through Captain Gerald's belongings. 
Haven't made much progress. I keep finding things that bring back memories. Clearing out this room of his belongings again, it's... It's not easy. Oh, Professor. Anything I can help you with? I will do whatever I can to serve you. Excellent. Leave it to me. No matter how small the task is, I vowed to Gerald I would help you. haven't a thing to worry about. You have been gifted the power of the goddess. Furthermore, you have overcome the death of your father, Geralt, and you have destroyed countless of our wicked foes. I am proud, so very proud of who you have become. <laughs> Once we finish the ritual at the Holy Tomb, all will be well. It is you. I am sorry, but I have a lot on my mind. I would prefer to be alone right now. to this. <laughs> Looks like I got it right. I think I get it now. You really think I'm that great? Got it right. I can't believe I got it right. No, I just got lucky.
No problem. <laughs> Nothing to get excited about. I... something I want to ask you. It seems like you just know everything. Professor. to catch you off guard but you managed to block it not too shabby professor oh come on look at the blade i threw it's just a wooden training sword at worst you could have gotten a bruise or perhaps a splinter let's agree it was funny and move on oh poor thing aren't you used to getting hurt you've been in your fair share of battles Besides, I knew you'd dodge in time. I told you before that I was going to observe you. Since then, I've been watching you. I know what you're capable of. I took steps to make myself invisible, so I could observe you without being detected. I hardly let you out of my sight. After extensive research, I've concluded that you really are first rate. Your sword skills are impeccable. You're a gifted educator. You clearly love working with the students. Someone with all of your exceptional qualities should not exist, but here you are. At first, I thought Geralt was the reason for Lady Rhea's interest in you. But no, Lady Rhea knew exactly what she was doing when she singled you out. Unfortunately, I can't hope to emulate you, let alone wield the Sword of the Creator. So my plan of imitating you for Lady Rhea's attention has come to nothing. 
I didn't say that. I plan to give Lady Rhea a detailed report about what you're up to. Hopefully, then I'll be in her good graces. Oh, and don't think you can avoid being watched. I won't let you out of my sight. I'm ready to do this thing. Dear Goddess, please protect us. That wasn't so bad. I'm beginning to understand. It's starting to make sense. How's this gonna help? It's all instinct now. actually passed? Shucks, I guess I did it. Easy. No big deal, really. I must continue to work hard. Ah. <sighs> 
there's really no better place for my midday nap than under the shade of a nice big tree. Uh, the twittering of the little birds. Mm, it's like they're singing a lullaby just for me. Guy, ah, is that a dagger? Am I being ambushed? Claude, why are you lazing about? You should be training. Shamir, is this your doing? Talk about unfriendly. Another inch and you would have sliced my handsome nose clean off my roguishly beautiful face. But I didn't. Fortunately for you. You know, if you wanted to give me a talking to, you could have done so with your words instead. That's how most people do the talking thing. Conversation was not my intention. Well, what then? A prank? That's not better. I thought we were under attack. I could have died from the shock. <sighs> Look closely at the dagger. Is that... <sighs> right. There's a poor spider impaled on it. A poisonous spider. The tiniest bite from which can cause fever, headache, and relentless vomiting. Or worse. Yikes. I guess this little guy is more vicious than he looks. I noticed it descending towards your face. Ah, so you saved me from a certain doom. Well, in that case, I'm sorry for questioning your motives. I promise to repay the favor someday. I'll keep that in mind. Wow, so that's what the greatest sniper of all the knights is capable of. Absolutely incredible. Fragrance. Could it be? Ferdinand, I cannot help but notice the exquisite tea you're drinking. Not many can appreciate it, let alone recognize it. I'm impressed. Perhaps you would be so good as to indulge me with a cup? By all means. Allow me one. Ah, what a delightful aroma. When I close my eyes, I feel as though I've wandered into a rose garden. Such a precise, poetic description. But please, drink up. No need to stand on ceremony. Mm, how gracious of you. Very well. Flavor, fragrance, and hue, all in fine harmony. This is a most superior brew. And in a market saturated by pale imitation, no less, you did well to acquire such fine fare. You are clearly quite passionate about tea, and more than just passionate. You know what it takes to brew a fine cup, to say nothing of your flawless etiquette and sterling attentiveness. Certainly, proper etiquette at tea time is one of the surest hallmarks of quality breeding, and the extent of one's attentiveness is quite often indicative of the depth of one's character. The ability of a person of fine stock to exhibit a rich quality of character is precisely what determines whether one is worthy to be called noble. And all of that can be seen in how one handles such a simple thing as a cup of tea. Ah, marvelously put, Lawrence. I can tell you have given much thought to this subject. And if I may, I have always considered you to be the very model of noble comportment. Oh, likewise, this has certainly been an extraordinarily meaningful cup of tea. I wholeheartedly concur. Before we part ways, I would like to offer you some of these leaves. Truly? Well, I'm flattered, but I cannot simply accept them without offering something in exchange. You simply must allow me to host you in turn, by way of recompense. We shall drink from House Gloucester's finest teacups and enjoy the loveliest of its cakes. That sounds exquisite. I look forward to it. <laughs> It just never ends. Oh, Ferdinand? Hilda, do you need something? I just have a tiny favor to ask. I apologize, but I must graciously decline. You didn't even let me say what it was. I can proffer a guess. Instead of relying on others, why not try doing something on your own? Nobles should not be lazy or idle. We should accomplish our goals through earnest effort. Easy for you to say. You're the very model of a diligent noble. Always contemplating the noblest course of action, never stopping to take a break. 
Your chore today was repairing the weapons, right? There are so many weapons here, and yet you're already done. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> it was nothing. Anyone could have done the same. I don't think so. I certainly couldn't. I do not believe that to be true. Look at me. I'm supposed to be organizing these library supplies, but I have no idea where to start. What could be difficult about such a task? You simply line them up and count them. There are too many! Well, maybe it doesn't seem difficult to you, but that's just because you're so clever. Granted, there might be some creative approaches to completing the task. Oh? Please, enlighten me. Hmm, I can point you in the right direction. But to start, divide them up by size. Right, right. I'm with you so far. And then what? Now, put similar items together. That makes it easier to get a handle on the numbers. I see. Then what? Now that you have arranged everything, you can begin counting. See how easy it is? Wow! You did that in no time! You really saved my neck there. Thanks, Ferdinand. Bye! <laughs> it was nothing. I... Oh. I suppose I ended up doing her work after all. Oh, it's Leone. Perfect. The soil's ready. Let's get to planting. She's so diligent, I can barely... Oh, look at her elbow. There we go, all set. Now a little water. Her sleeve's all torn. She should get that fixed. Hey, Bernadetta. What are you doing here? Uh, Leone! I was... Um... Hmm? What is it? I was just... Admiring your hard work. If you've got time to stare, you may as well help me out. Is that all you wanted to say? Uh, not exactly. Well, come on. Out with it. Oh, it's the, the elbow! Your elbow looks fine to me. Is it bothering you? Not mine. Yours. Your sleeve's torn. Huh, how about that? You're right. I didn't notice. You could have just told me right away, you know. <laughs> it's just a little tear, though. Nothing to worry about. If you don't mind, I could fix it for you. It would only take a minute. You can do that? I'm actually pretty good at sewing. I never knew. Well, if you're offering, by all means. Just let me finish watering these. I guess I should get this shirt off first, though, huh? What? Hold on, don't... You can't just...
It's good to try new things. This can only make me stronger. New challenge to tackle. Whatever the goddess ordains. I'll figure this out.
Thanks a bunch. I got this. Leave it to me. I stand ready. Here. 
Maybe I was too lazy. Won that. Guess I'm still growing. Was a good try. Going for it. Should have trained better. Still got room to grow.
did it! There you are. I have a request for you. It has to do with that plot to assassinate Lady Rhea. The bishop leading the Western Church was somehow involved. And speaking of the Western Church, there was also that incident in which one of the more extreme factions tried to occupy sacred land. Enough is enough. So now the Knights of Saros have been tasked with putting the bishop down. I thought you and your students could come with us. Because you wield the sword of the Creator. Lady Rhea is going to personally execute the bishop. I have been appointed as her guard. I want your help protecting her. So, what do you say? Will you come? Um, excuse me. I'd like to come along. Ash, you were listening in? It's not up to you whether you can come along. Please, this is important to me. Your adoptive father, Lord Lonato, had connections to the Western Church. I understand that you want answers. But our objective is to punish, not to investigate. We can't let you jeopardize the mission. I won't get in the way. I promise. Hmm. What do you say, Professor? Keep in mind, we would be bringing the whole class, not just Ash. Thank you so much. Okay, I guess it's fine. Get ready then.
This will make me even stronger. It's good to try new things. There she is, a sneaky little witch, trying to pass herself off as the goddess's envoy. Archbishop Rhea, I'll bring judgment upon you in the goddess's stead. They're using the fog as cover to ambush us. What a cheap ploy. It won't do any good to get annoyed, Catherine. That voice. We are up against a faction of bishops. They've shown themselves, at least, so we won't have to go to the trouble of finding them. All right, you got a death wish? Come at me! You really want to fight against Thunder, Catherine? Please, Professor, don't let Lady Rhea get hurt. Our mission isn't just to wipe out all the enemies, but also to protect Lady Rhea. Ready? Stop. 
stay focused. Ready and willing. I stand ready. that taking out the priest has stopped the reinforcements coming over here. We should be able to stop the reinforcements coming from the other side by taking care of the other priest. them all. Let's get to it. is what I do. Good try. Where 
Continues. Just like that. was tough. Magnificent. Hurt you. 
sorry. The victory is mine. for the punishment of the goddess! Done yet. Apostates, you sully the name of the goddess. You are the apostates. The goddess is with me. Lady Rhea. Appreciate that. Side one. They will not be able to send any more troops now. Let us sweep up the stragglers. Good work, Lady Rhea. Let's round them up and cut them down. Ah! 
Still not satisfied. Sorry. You were outmatched. Goddess, have mercy. Forgive them their sins and save their souls. It would have been better if we'd captured the bishop, but they didn't make it easy for us. What now, Lady Rhea? We must go to the headquarters of the Western Church. Perhaps there is still someone there who knows what has transpired. Let us help, too. It may not be much, but we'll do whatever we can. I am sure you will be a great help. I am glad to have you by my side. <laughs> Thanks, Professor. I really appreciated your help with the investigation. That's it for today. Head back to Garrig Mach. The Church will have to choose a new bishop and do whatever else is necessary to rebuild the Western Church. Lady Rhea is grateful to all of you. She said she would send along a reward. You should feel very proud. Receiving a gift directly from Lady Rhea is exceedingly rare. Still, that was a real mess, huh? For them to come out and charge us so boldly. As am I. We kept Lady Rhea safe, thanks to you. Hey, where did Ash go? I haven't seen him for a while. That may be it. I hope he's not getting in the way. There you are, Ash. We were just talking about... Why the brooding expression? Hey, what's that bundle of papers in your hand? This was given to me. It has to do with my family. I haven't finished reading it all yet. But I think it might offer some clues about something I need to know. Professor, Catherine, thank you for letting me come with you on this mission. I'd better get ready to go. It's a little painful to watch. I do hope that those papers, whatever they are, will help him get over his past. 
I suppose it's time for us to start heading back to the monastery. And that is our situation. But with so few knights, we'll surely... Ah, Professor! Excellent timing! Alois, you're not going to suggest we send students, are you? <laughs> I am, actually. Do you have a problem with that? I do. We can't send them out on a knight's mission without Rhea's blessing. I'm sure I can get the go-ahead. I'll just say the students have a new field training opportunity or something like that. Besides, we'll be there. We're not going to let them get killed by pirates. There are pirates causing havoc in the port of Deirdre, at the center of House Regan's territory. The Merchants Association sent a request via the Eastern Church asking for protection. You haven't heard of the Eastern Church? I suppose it's because they don't have much of a presence. The Eastern Church controls Eastern Fodlan. They don't have a standing army like we do. So, for incidents like this, they customarily ask for help from the Central Church. I imagine they want to contribute to make their presence known in the Alliance. Uh, be that as it may, we Knights are quite busy. We don't have personnel to spare. Therefore, we're enlisting your help. You should have some experience dealing with pirates from your mercenary days, right? The students have dealt with pirates, so this shouldn't be a problem for them. Come with us, won't you? Think of it as a training exercise. The Merchants Association will reward us handsomely. We don't have time to lose. Let's take care of this quickly.
This suits me. My captain would approve. More weapons. Tremble before us! We are the great navy of Almira. Resist, and we'll burn this town to the ground! <laughs> the Almira Navy. This is going to be tougher than I expected. Huh? Sure, those look like Almira ships, but I guarantee you they're just common pirates. They're obviously bluffing, but it seems to be working on the merchants. Shall we? It's the Knights! Please, save us! We'll reward you handsomely! It would be a disaster if they attacked our shops. Please, don't let them into town. We've got you. Leave it to the Knights of Seros. Ready and able. I stand. Stay focused. to me. Oh! I just worked harder. I stand ready. 
That helps. This is what I do. Ready and willing. Never underestimate an outsider. To work. I got this. I'm good now. Ready anytime. Thanks. No hesitation. That is that. It's over. Should I have held back? Golden deer for you. Apologies. I get it now. Sleep in the dirt. Appreciate it. Each battle a chance to grow. I'll have to be clever. You 
Watch and learn! Was a good try. Are we done? to the next fight. Let's do this. for you. So kind. 
another one down. Guess I've gotten better. Such power dwells within. Piece of cake. Yeah. Too easy. Yeah. It's not luck, it's fate. No hesitation. As expected. battle a chance to grow. Be mindful. that guy was. If you're going to pose as an Almiron, at least fight like one. Well, that's over with. They were a lot more trouble than I expected. Thank you so much. Here's your reward. Please take it. Good gracious, I didn't expect it to become such a large-scale battle. It seems they caused the merchants unnecessary confusion by disguising themselves as all Myrons. Ah, oh, we taught the pirates a lesson, though. That should calm them down a bit. <laughs> I know this was more than you signed up for, but you really saved us. Thanks for your help. This can't be how you were expecting your day to go. Patient and understanding. Just like Captain Gerald. We owe you a token of our appreciation, I think. Take the reward from the Merchants Association. Share it with your students if you like. Take it. We'll collect our reward from the Eastern Church. Besides, Alois could never keep it for himself. Of course not. We knights serve as the sword and shield of Saint Saros herself. We pride ourselves on our integrity. 
We reject all rewards that are not perfectly legitimate. In other words, he's a coward who would feel guilty and lose sleep over it. <laughs> That's also one of his many merits. Shamir, you don't mince words. Though it does seem like you've learned how to show a little respect. Must have learned that from you. I don't remember teaching you that. Anyway, Professor, keep the compensation. I'd say you've earned it. Those merchants really needed your help. For all the buying and selling they do, they're not so good at trading blows. You get it? <laughs> trading blows? They <laughs> and merchants, they... Oh, forget it. We have to prepare for our next mission. Until next time, Professor. This was partly a challenge for me. <laughs> it was only a trifle. This now I see the heart of it. get it. Oh, thanks, Professor. That's real nice of you to say. This isn't so hard. Thank 
Why am I here? I thank you. Not bad. Thanks for your hospitality. I hope you'll invite me again sometime. That wasn't so bad. It's starting to make sense. Better than before. pretty good at this. I will master this. I've grasped it. How lovely. I've got it. This will help keep me alive. I'm finding my focus. You've done me a great service. Hi, Flame. Have the four saints caught your fancy? Hello there, Claude. No, not particularly. I was merely looking. I see. In any case, do you mind if I ask you a little something? It's about your family's origin. This again? <laughs> there is truly nothing of interest to discuss on that topic. Ah, but when you try to change the subject like that, it drives me mad with curiosity. That said, taking a secret by force isn't my style. That's why I devised a different approach. Relentless nagging. Might I suggest giving up entirely? Truth be told, my brother has asked that I not speak of my background to anyone. I thought it might be something like that. Oh well, guess I'd better give up on trying to get you to tell me yourself. Instead, why don't I tell you about the theory I've come up with? You've concocted a theory, have you? I suppose there is no harm in listening to it. I did a bit of investigating into the crests that you and Sedith bear. Sedith's is the major crest of Keyhole, and yours is the major crest of Sethleen. Where did you learn of this? Oh, I just took a peek at some records by a renowned crest scholar. I'd rather not say more than that. Anyway, my point is that I don't think I've ever heard of two siblings each bearing the major crests of a pair of saints. If the legends are true, then Saint Keyhole was Saint Sethleen's father, wasn't he? Which means if you and Sedith were the descendants of Saint Sethleen, that would explain how you two came to possess Keyhole and Sethleen's crests. You mean to suggest that my brother and I are the children's children's children of Sethleen? That about sums it up. 
An interesting theory, to say the least. But surely you must know. Saint Sethleen was never married. There are no tales of her having ever had children. Sure, sure, but the possibilities are endless. It's not like legends are known for their accuracy. But based on your reaction, I guess I'm probably following a bad lead here. Hello, Catherine. A moment of your time. Oh, it's you. Yes? That sword you wear upon your hip, how did you come by it, exactly? I don't appreciate your tone. Are you implying I swiped it off someone? Not at all, but heroes' relics are typically passed down through the bloodlines of the Ten Elites. You are descended from a noble family, are you not? That's none of your business. Actually... Let's say I was a nobody, with no relic, no crest. I would still be me, wouldn't I? That's not to say lineage counts for nothing. It just doesn't count as much as how you live your life and what you live for. Or, let's say I was descended from some noble house. Would that change how you treat me? Yes, it would. To treat you differently from the common folk would only be appropriate. You're so narrow-minded, tied down by foolish, antiquated notions. But the nobility and the common folk are different. If the few did not have capabilities to set them apart from the many, then they would not be the few. Wow. You really think nobles are better than everyone else, don't you? I didn't mean to suggest... You pay so much attention to people's lineage and status that you have no idea who they actually are. Even if I was from the prestigious house whatever, I would never associate with a blowhard like you. Good day, Ignatz. So, painting again? Ingrid. Yes, I'm painting St. Saros again. Look, I'm really sorry about the last time. It's my fault it turned out so, well, different. No, no need to apologize. I appreciated the fresh input. It made me think. That's kind of you to say, but no need to pull punches. It's the truth. I'm so caught up in my own mind, I'd never have thought to try that. Ignatz, I appreciate your attitude, but... Yes? There are times when it's okay to feel upset or angry. If you're feeling that way, it's always best to be honest. But... But... I understand the weight of what I did. I besmirched a sacred image, and it was a painting you were pouring your heart into. I got carried away, but I'd prefer if you had told me then and there that my request was uncalled for. I'm not angry. I could never get angry with you. I'm sorry. Why are you apologizing? I'm the one apologizing. Oh, sorry. Stop saying sorry! <sighs> never mind. Forgive me. I came here to apologize, and now I'm being sharp with you. Don't worry. It's my fault, really. I'm not very good at expressing myself. I never intended to bother. I think I'll leave you to it. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Today's training was murder. Ah, Shamir, I have a question for you. Um, Shamir? Oh, I suppose she's meditating or something. Never mind then, I guess. Where are you going? Ha! Ah! Shamir! Don't you have a question? Uh, no. It's not important. I'm finished meditating. Speak. Uh, no, it's not... You're probably tired anyway. 
always be willing to speak and ask questions. Understood? Yes, understood. I'll remember that for next time. Next time? Um, yes. I'm okay for today. Uh, sorry to disturb you. I'll be leaving now. Why must he be so difficult? Ah, found you! Hello, Lysithia. Uh, Hilda? What's that box you're holding? It's making me nervous for some reason. <laughs> Your big sister Hilda's here, and she's going to make you look all grown up. I, uh, don't recall ever asking you to... That's right. I knew exactly what you needed. You didn't have to ask. Now take a seat. With makeup, you can't just pick your favorite colors. You must choose colors that suit you and the occasion. If you'll be up close and personal, if you're going to a ball, for example, you want to keep it subtle. On the other hand, if you're going to be on stage, the colors should be overt. Uh... I've never used makeup before. It sounds complicated. Let's put up your hair to show off your neck. But we'll leave a few strands hanging to make you look more vulnerable. Why would I want to appear vulnerable? I don't want to be attacked. <laughs> this is for wooing, not warring. When you're older, you might understand the importance of looking a little vulnerable. Ugh, you're treating me like a child. But I guess it's mostly harmless. Now, when you're standing, put your non-dominant foot a step back. It looks more elegant. When sitting, don't lean back, but don't slouch either. And ensure at all times you are gracefully extending your fingers. Gracefully? Extending? Ugh. Suddenly standing and sitting are an exhausting activity. Hilda, that's enough. This is wearing me out. I knew you had potential. You'll go far, my darling. A couple of years to develop your charms, and no girl will outmatch you. I'm not sure I'm cut out for this type of thing. Oh, believe me, you are. With a little help from me, you'll have men falling at your feet. No thanks. You're more suited to such things. I'll leave it to you. I haven't the time or the energy to fuss over how I'm perceived. Even with my best efforts, I'll never be as good at this as you are. Still, this was rather fun. Thank you, Hilda. She really is brimming with untapped potential. When she smiles like that, wow, even my heart skips a beat. <laughs> Sorry to keep you waiting. How long did you expect me to stand here? I did just say sorry, but I could say the same to you. You were pretty slow to settle on a time. I can't help having a busy schedule. Plus, I thought you could use the extra time to prepare. We could go back and forth like this all day. Or we could get started. <laughs> you were the one who kept me waiting. Let's begin. On my signal? Hurry up. That's better. Okay, go! Let's see what you... Huh? Oh! A pit trap? That's right. How you feeling down there? Coward! Say what you want, but Captain Gerald taught me this one. You're heavier than you look. I'll admit, I wasn't expecting that. If this were for real, you'd be dead. Aren't you glad I put straw down there instead of spikes? Yes. I underestimated you. I suppose your lateness was a ploy to distract me. You're not wrong. I did it to rile you up. Draw you in. You're capable, confident. I was counting on that. So, think about Captain Gerald's training now. His technique worked and you won. What else is there to say? Winning is all that matters. You drew my attention to a major vulnerability. I'll need to be wary of traps. 
Thank you, Leone. Seeing as you're thanking me, can I ask you a favor? Will you come watch my next training session? I'd like a few pointers about fighting in close quarters. The loser must pay tribute, I suppose. Yes, I'll help you train. You will? Thanks! Alois, I was hoping you could tell me some more stories about Captain Gerald. You'd like to hear about Gerald's adventures? You seem quite taken with these stories, Leonie. Can't hurt, can it? All our work for the day is done. So remind me, how did you meet him? Ah, it all feels like ancient history now. You see, the captain was visiting the kingdom of Fargus. Uh-huh. Go on. His previous squire had died from a ghastly plague. Then one day, he came upon me and appointed me his new squire. At that age, you must have had some real talent and courage to stand out as a future knight. Oh, no, it wasn't that. I was just an orphan boy living in the monastery. I was a timid little thing. Really? He didn't choose you for your bravery? What made him choose you, then? My face looked like the dead boys. What? That's it? Well, I asked the captain, and that was the only answer he gave me. Ha! <laughs> Abrasive to the last. That's Captain Gerald for you. Yes. In those early days, I would sometimes wonder whether he was right in the head. When I saw him on the battlefield, though, those concerns were laid to rest. Anyway, I think I hear your professor has been looking for you. You'd better scram. Oh no, you're right. I'd better go. See you around. <laughs> No. Hey! Whoa. Fun! Let me show you my cooking talent. A little more secret spice and... Hey! No peeking! This is nearly as delicious as Mother's cooking. I would happily eat this every day. Uh, this food is a revelation. <laughs> I can't help but smile when I eat it. That looks delicious. Goddess, forgive me. I've just got to indulge. Hmm. I like seeing a table full of my favorite dishes.
Eating delicious food really takes my worries away. This is my favorite. I am rather happy you went out of your way to pick it, Professor. This is delicious! My absolute favorite! Ah, oh, I can eat so much of this stuff. My stomach's growling just thinking about it. It's amazing. My fave, in fact. Do you like it too? I would be liking that greatly. this dish. It was my father's favorite. Delicious! After a scrumptious meal like that, I feel that I can really seize the day. Yummy! Who made this? I'll have to give my compliments to the chef. This is my absolute favorite! How did you know, Professor? I did not expect much from the dining hall, but this does not disappoint. Eating food always fires me up. Hoorah! Let's go fight somebody! Mm, me, 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 me. 
Mm, something appears to be wrong with my throat. I hope this song reaches the goddess's ears. I adore this. Oh, I adore this. I appreciate this. I I appre I appreciate this. Furthermore, I I appreciate this. I appreciate this. I appreciate. I appreciate this. I appreciate this. I appreciate this. Hello there. I've been waiting for you. If you would, please allow me a closer look at your face. Those beautiful shining eyes, and silken hair so similar to my own. Oh dear, please excuse my rudeness, I forgot myself for a moment. It is only that we haven't had a chance to speak privately since you were blessed with the power of the goddess. I hope I have not caused you any discomfort. Oh, I do not know what to say. I am overjoyed that you feel that way, but... Well, to be frank, that is not like you, is it? Still, no matter how I wish to strengthen the bonds between us, it is important that I not overstep. Yes. As souls blessed by a connection to the Progenitor God, the bonds between us are truly unbreakable. Just as the Goddess blessed you with her own power, I too received her divine protection long, long ago. Though different, our fates are entwined. <laughs> you say that now, but I am certain there is much you still wish to know. To that end, Know that truth has a way of revealing itself, in time. If you experience any further changes, please know that you can rely on me to guide you. Sedith and Flayne are also here to support you however they can. Dear child, may the Goddess protect you, always. <laughs> soon, please. Welcome. 
Um. This one? Thank you. This one? Thank you. Please come again. Hello there. This one, yes? I think 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 this one, yes? I thank you. Return soon, please. Did you call me? Oh, this is my favorite tea. Do you, um, have sugar? Lots, please. I am grateful. I feel at ease. Talking to you feels worth my time. I feel there's a lot I can learn from you. I see. Ah, that tea was delicious. Invite me again sometime. See ya. What are you doing? The training equipment needed maintenance, so I thought I'd give it a good cleaning and some oil. Why is that for you to do? If you intend to use something a lot, it's on you to take good care of it. You are a noble who does not have fear of working with hardness or becoming dirty. And you can climb trees. I am... impressed. Thanks, but to be honest, I don't think being a noble really has anything to do with anything. Nobles and commoners are all equal here. We're all buddies. Even you do chores, don't you? Social rank doesn't matter when you put your life in each other's hands. I like that about this place. I have your same opinion. Status is something chosen by chance, not by a person. Everything became different when I came from Bridget to the Empire. Nobility does not stop life from surprising you. I know just what you mean. It's not like the ancestors of the nobility or royalty were selected by the goddess herself, after all. What does origin or status matter? In the grand scheme of things, we're all just insignificant mortals. Nobility isn't a matter of birthright alone. At least not in my eyes. Plot, you are... <laughs> very much strange for a noble. Thanks, and same to you. You're a princess of Bridget, right? If I'm a strange noble, you are too. I am normal in Bridget. In Fodlin, you are an... abnormality. <laughs> an abnormality, am I? Gentleman that I am, I'll go ahead and take that as a compliment. I think also that your heart is kind. I am thinking you will be a good king. I'll remember that. But for now, this equipment isn't gonna clean itself. I will be helping you. We will join together our efforts. <laughs> You're an abnormality, princess. A wonderful abnormality. You! Oh, I, I beg your pardon. Are you all right? Yes, I'm fi- oh, I'm fine. I just twisted my ankle. That won't do. Come, take my hand. Let's get you to the infirmary. Are you sure it's okay to be seen helping me? Uh, why would it not be? I thought you only extended...
demonstrate your kindness to the nobility. Certainly not. To aid a commoner in need is the most noble endeavor of all. Not only that, you were injured by my carelessness. It is doubly my duty to assist. In that case, I'll gladly accept your offer. Oh, good. There does not appear to be any real swelling, so you should heal swiftly. Thank you so much for escorting me. Walking on it will still be unpleasant. Allow me to lend you my shoulder, at least as far as your room. If you're still offering to help, then I can't say no. There you are, safe and sound. I will take my leave. Thank you again, Lawrence. You know, I think I've learned something about you. What is that? In truth, it's not that you only extend your kindness to noble women. It's that you can't even see us of lower birth. Excuse me? You and I have been together all this time, but never once did you look me in the eye. I hadn't noticed. But you will have to excuse any perceived rudeness. As the heir to House Gloucester, I have a duty. I must ask you to forget about me. Farewell. Forget about him? What could that possibly mean? Gaspar, good to see you. You're looking a bit bigger lately. Yeah, Raphael, that's one way to put it. Is something wrong? I thought you wanted to get bigger. Have you been training? I haven't missed a day. The problem is that my body doesn't want to grow in the directions I want it to. I was hoping to get a little taller, but I seem to just be growing wider. I don't think your methods are for me. Oh, that's too bad. I always thought the secret to getting bigger was lots of eating and training. You know what? You shouldn't worry so much about how big or tall you are. You're great, no matter what size. What makes you say that? Well, let's see. You can run faster than me, and you're really agile, which I'll never be. That's just about your legs, though. Your other movements are quick, too. You can dodge good and swing a sword pretty fast. Oh, and you're... All right, Raphael. I think I see the problem now. I thought I envied the size of your body, but I was wrong. After hearing you say those nice things about me, I realized that I actually envy the size of your heart. Huh? I think it's normal size, but... That's right! I don't just need a bigger body, I need a bigger heart! Once I have a bigger heart, then maybe, just maybe, my body will start growing too. Yeah, maybe! Now how do I increase the size of my heart? It didn't help with my body, but do you think eating will make my heart grow? I have no idea, but I'm always up for a meal. I really don't want to get any wider, though. I'm so conflicted. Well, I guess there's only one way to find out. It's like you always say, when in doubt, go to the dining hall. <laughs> You're going to receive the goddess's revelation at the holy tomb? That's news to me. I did not see that coming. Lady Rhea's going too, right? I hear it will be well guarded, but is that really okay? If Solon's allies are still around, it's certainly true that we don't know when or where they may appear. I don't know what type of place this holy tomb is, but we should be cautious. If something happens, we'll have to take matters into our own hands. What do you think, Professor? Is it really okay for Lady Rhea to attend? Leave it to our fearless leader to shrewdly factor in Rhea's fighting ability. You're bold, Teach. I love it. Well, the truth is, we won't know what's going to happen until it happens. All we can do is stay on our guard and play it by ear. 
That's quite enough babbling, Claude. There is nobody more unfit for a holy ceremony than you. Um, divine punishment won't strike us for setting foot in the holy tomb, right? Good grief. Why are you always so negative? Hmm? Flame? Is something on your mind? Who, me? No, it is nothing. May we all see this through to the end. It still doesn't make sense to me. A goddess was living inside Teach, right? But now there's a ceremony to receive a revelation or whatever. How could that be necessary anymore? There must be another objective. <sighs> it's pointless to speculate about it now. We'll know the answer soon enough. There isn't any danger for us students, but be careful, Teach. Are you surprised, Professor? This is the Holy Tomb. That mechanism for descending underground back there, what power is it? When I tried to come by myself, it wouldn't even budge. This is where the goddess who created this world was laid to rest, along with her children. It is said that our creator, the goddess Sothis, sat upon this very throne. Professor, do you recognize this throne? So long. I have waited so very long for this day. Sit upon the throne. I have no doubt you will be gifted a revelation from the goddess. Well? It was supposed to be but a step away. What could possibly be missing? Sorry to disturb you when you're distressed, Archbishop, but it seems some uninvited guests have arrived. <laughs> Don't move, any of you. If you move, your lives will be forfeit. Thank you ever so much for guiding us this far. The Imperial Army will now take possession of everything in the Holy Tomb. <laughs> The Imperial Army? What are they doing here? So, they knew we were heading to the Holy Tomb and followed us here. Hey, who is that standing next to the angry guy? Could that be... The Flame Emperor. I see. So you've been allied with the Empire from the beginning. What are they doing here? What do they hope to gain? There's only one goal for grave robbers like these. Right, Flame Emperor? You're here to steal the treasure that rests within the Holy Tomb. For a fool you catch on quickly, those crest stones will be ours. That infernal power, which is masquerading as a medicine but is truly a poison, will plague this world no longer. Insolence! You will atone for the sin of trampling on this holy resting place, Professor. Destroy these villainous traitors who dare dishonor our creator! Thanks a bunch! Is that the one? Thanks a bunch! Is 
Is that the one? Thanks a bunch. Is that the one? Thanks a bunch. Come back soon. Time to start over again. Bye. 
I will not allow such violence from the Empire. Strike down the rebels and protect the Holy Tomb. The crest stones are in the caskets. Open every last one of them. The Holy Tomb must not be desecrated. Protect as many of the crest stones as you can. I guess we're fighting over who gets those crest stones. What in the world do they intend to use them for anyway? Who, me? Ready and willing. for you. Leave it to me. Stay focused. I stand ready. I got this. This is what I do. Stones are...
<laughs> Thank you. Sorry, but victory is mine. Delicate flower, you know. I got an idea.
more to lose. I could use a break. Hard to be happy about this. As expected. A trivial victory. more I can learn.
That is that. Just worked harder. You had it in you. Oh! It was a good try. Life doesn't always go as planned. Should I have held back? I 
thought I gave it my all. Sorry, don't know my own strength. Sorry. My muscles proud. Told it's fine to kill those who resist. Now then, how shall I cook you? Torture them! You That helps.
Orders. I just... Sorry, the victory is mine. I'll grow as strong as I can. So you're the fabled Flame Emperor? Go ahead and enlighten me. What are you planning to do with the Crest Stones? What did you use Flame's blood for? Who's Kranya? Who's Solar? Silence! There is no need for you to know. Is it that mask that's to blame for your curtness? If so, maybe I should rip it off and ask again. You are the one person 
I did not wish to make an enemy of. Such power dwells within. Thanks for that. Don't hold this against me, okay? <laughs> Progress suits me well. So, the end has come. Is this some sick joke? The Flame Emperor is actually Edelgard? You have disappointed me, Edelgard. To think that a descendant of House Heresmelg would dare betray the Holy Church. Professor, kill Edelgard at once. She is a danger to all of Fodlan. Such a rebellious heart cannot be allowed to keep beating. I have achieved my objective. I will retreat. Farewell, Professor. If we meet again, it will be on the battlefield. Come, Hubert. To flee is futile, wicked girl. The Church of Seros will raise its entire army against you until you have been captured and punished. You have defiled the holy tomb, dishonored the goddess, and humiliated your brethren. That crime will never be erased. Even if you burn in the eternal flames and spill all of your blood into the goddess's soil. Come, Professor. Let us return and decide upon our next course of action. I'm not exactly on friendly terms with the princess, but I do have a few questions for her. Edelgard said that the crest stones represent power. That means she knows how to use them. She almost certainly knows other secrets of Fodlin as well. Once things calm down a bit, there's a lot more that Rhea needs to tell us. I just hope there's still time. I have this strange feeling that history is being written. That an age of anarchy is upon us. Let's hope I'm mistaken. The leaders of the church have misused its creed to fulfill their true desire, to rule the world. They have fooled the people of Fodlin. Long ago, they divided the empire to create a kingdom, and then divided that kingdom to create an alliance. 
They did all of this to make the masses bicker amongst themselves. They caused instability in order to reinforce their own authority. They gathered gold and lived in extravagance. How? By preying on the devotion of those who wished for the goddess's salvation. Those corrupt hypocrites cannot lead Bodlin to true peace. Their foul belief system must be torn asunder so that true wisdom may finally prevail. And so, I have decided. By order of the Adrestian Emperor, Edelgard von Hresfeld, the Empire hereby declares war on the Church of Seros. I cannot believe it. Let us recount the situation as it stands, Professor. After you returned from the Holy Tomb, the Adrestian Empire declared war upon the Church of Seros, as well as our allies. Edelgard demanded her own father relinquish the throne, and then assumed the position of Emperor. She has deemed the Church of Seros to be an evil of this world, and is calling upon the people of Fodlin to help her tear it down. I must discuss our response to this declaration with the Archbishop, after the Knights return from their investigation. Until then, watch over the students. See that they remain calm. I heard what happened, Teach. The Princess, well, the Emperor now. She really did it, didn't she? The Lords and Dukes of both the Kingdom and the Alliance have been called out, and now have to choose between the Church and the Empire. The seed of conflict was always there, and now we find ourselves in the middle of a war that will tear Fodlin in two. The Empire is rash. I never thought it would come to this. How could something like this happen? I hope everyone back home is safe. I'm sure it's mass confusion at home right now. My brother must be worried sick about me. You're absolutely right, Teach. I'm sure a lot of us are worried about our homes, but all we can do for now is prepare for battle and tread carefully.